Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at, uh, we're going to continue talking about resistor only circuits, and we're going to look at something called Kirchhoff's rules. Okay, so these rules actually apply to all circuits. Um, so most of the circuit problems that we're going to encounter can be solved by repeatedly applying the rules for adding resistors in series or parallel, right? The stuff that we talked about in the last video. Okay, and so we reduce the until so we reduce that problem down to one battery connected to a single resistor. Now, that's simple circuits, and so and the way we think about it is that parallel and series circuits can typically be simple circuits. Now, to solve more complex circuits, um, especially ones that contain more than one battery, we're going to need to write equations based on these rules, these Kirchhoff's rules. Okay, for you guys that are interested in chemistry, I haven't forgotten F. Kirchhoff was also good friends with Bunsen, who is of Bunsen burner fame. All right, so his first rule, as we call it the junction rule, and we kind of saw this in one of the videos um, where we talk about how the sum of the current in has to equal the sum of the current out, right? Or simply, the total current, IO, equals the sum of the current in each of the legs. Okay. Now, the, this part of Kirchhoff's rules is really based on conservation of charge. So remember, when charge, charge has to be conserved. And so that's what happens here is that you can only put so much charge in and get so much charge out, right? It doesn't get lost. It, it just really splits into that loop, into that, at that junction, right? So if I have a junction that looks like this, and we saw this picture before, I've got IO going in. Some will get split down to I1. Some will get split into I2. But when they come out, when they meet again at the junction again, it has to be IO coming out. All right, And so that's good. that would help, for one thing, with Kirchhoff's rules. Okay, the second of his rules is what we call the loop rule, which tells us that the sum of the potential differences across all elements around any closed circuit loop must be zero, right? So the sum of the potential difference has to equal zero, okay? This part of Kirchhoff's rule is really based on conservation of energy, right? Because um, potential difference comes from electric potential energy, Right, the idea that energy cannot be created nor destroyed is just transferred from one form to another. Now, how do we really apply these rules? Right, so this is one of the not necessarily difficult topics, but one of the more confusing topics. Um, to make sure you're applying this right, that you have the, the positive and negative signs right. So, here's how you determine the signs, right, of the loop or current. Now, if the loop and current are in the same direction. the voltage drop will be negative. And it numerically would be negative IR, right? Because use that Ohm's law relationship, V equals I times R. So the potential drop across any resistor would be negative IR. Now if the loop and the, sorry, and the current are in opposite directions, then you're gonna have a voltage rise so your IR now would be positive. Okay. Uh, and then the loop exiting the positive terminal of the battery, the voltage will rise, right? So we'll have a plus EMF. Then that EMF meaning electromotive force. And then the loop exiting the negative terminal 
the voltage will drop and our voltage would be negative. Okay, again, like I said, this is the one, you, this, this bullet point right here is the, the most important slash most confusing part of Kirchhoff's rules because this is the one where it's like, okay, is that really going in the same direction? Is it going in opposite directions? Do I go across the, the positive end? Do I go across the negative end? Um, so I'm, we're going to do two examples. One's going to be a little bit, you know, kind of easier of an example where we can talk about it. And then the other one's going to be a kind of a, a combined right effort with um, kind of looks like a parallel circuit. All right. So here's the first question. It says a single loop circuit contains two resistors and two batteries as shown in the figure. Find the current in the circuit. Okay. So for one thing, right, we know that this is in series. So the current is going to be the same throughout. Okay. And it is important to kind of identify I'm going to blow the picture up here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do our, you know, really do our, if you want to say our analysis right here first, and then we'll go do the equation, right? So let's determine positive negatives and plus IR, negative IR, plus electromotive force, negative electromotive force. Um, so let's figure that out right now. So what we need to do is really first determine that current and how does it pass through each potential voltage difference all right and so here it tells me it's going clockwise so current 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 okay so i drew the current across the resistors and the batteries so we start here we look at our rules it says if the looping current in the same direction as it goes through the resistor right we're going to have a negative ir if it goes from positive, if it, if it exits the negative end, right, it's going to be a um, negative EMF, okay? So this is kind of the important thing. So let's look at how that works. So the first thing, let's do that. We'll do that in this color. Um, so the first thing is I start my, I flip the switch, however it turns on. I start here, I move around. I come to, to point B, I'm going to go to point C. So notice that the loop and the current, right? The way the loop travels, the loop travels clockwise, the current travels clockwise. So that's going to tell me that I'm going to have a negative IR passing through the 8 ohm resistor. Okay. Now I keep following my loop, still going clockwise. All right. And the next part says if it exits the negative end of the terminal, right? So this current would come through the positive and come out the negative end. So because it's leaving the negative end, I'm going to have a negative electromotive force, which they give us is negative, you know, this negative E2. Right. So again, continuing my path around counter or excuse me, clockwise. Now I'm going to pass. So I'm going to have a voltage drop, right? So remember, that's why we have a negative IR because the voltage actually drops at these points, okay? So this through R2 would be negative R2. Let me write some subscripts in there, right? And now as I come back through to complete my loop, right, I'm going to go into the negative and I'm going to come out the positive, which tells me that this E1 is going to be positive, right? So there's going to be a positive electromotive force. Okay, so remember, if I go from positive to negative, and this is where it exits, I'm going to have a negative E. And if I go from negative to positive, which is where the po it exits, that will be a positive E. Okay, and if I have a drop, it's a negative IR. If I have a rise, it's positive IR. Okay, so there's how we analyze this. Um, our circuit's been completely analyzed. Now let's go do the, the, the equation. Right, and so again, we're ultimately looking for the um, the current in the circuit. So we're trying to solve this for I. So we know from his loop rule that the sum of the voltage has to equal zero. Okay, um, and so we have all of our information. So we got we have or E one, which is positive. Right, so I start with that because we went from negative into positive. All right, then I encounter resistor one, 
which we had a voltage drop. Then we encountered the second one, which we went into positive, out of negative. So it becomes a negative E2. And then we have our second resistor, and it was a voltage drop. So that becomes IR2. And all that has to equal zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation for I. Right, because this is a parallel circuit, or excuse me, a series circuit. That rule holds true that the current remains the same throughout. So I'm going to sub, I'm going to add I R one and I R two to the other side. Do a little about algebra, right? Pull out the uh, I. Okay, I is going to be equal to the sum of the volt of the potential drops or potential differences divided by the sum of the resistors. Right, and so it was. Uh, I apologize. This is not the sum of the resistors because this one was negative, and I didn't bring that to the other side. Right, and so it's going to be six minus twelve over ten plus eight. So it's going to be negative 6 over 18, which is going to be negative 0.333 amps. Okay, so there's the current that runs through this circuit. All right, now let's look at the next one. It says find currents I1, I2, and I3 in the circuit shown in the figure, right? Okay, so we're going to start with, let's analyze this, right? Now, technically, there are three kind of circuits here, if you want to think about it. Um, you have uh, one circuit is A to B to C to D to A. So this circuit down here, so A to B to C to D and then back to A. And then you have a second circuit, which I'll do in a different color, is where the second of the three circuits would be um, B to E to F to C to B, so I'll start here, to E, to F, to C, and then back to B. And then, the, then you have the big circuit, right? The From A to E to F to D, back to A. But that doesn't necessarily like, that doesn't play much into it, okay? So we're gonna, this is, we're gonna analyze the purple and the red, okay? So let's look at how our um, positives and negatives work out for those two circuits. So let's look at the A, B, C, D, A one, right? So the purple one. So again, we follow our rule, right? So now we're doing a, uh, this is our loop rule, right? For, we're, it's like we're going to take apart, we're going to take away that, um, the, the top one. Only look at the bottom one right now, okay? So I, my, if I start at A, right, nothing from A to B, and then I go from B to C, notice I encounter a battery, okay? So I have, I go from negative to positive, so it's going to tell me this is going to be a positive 10 volts, right? Because I'm, I'm entering the negative and coming out of the positive, all right? Now, the next one, I'm going to have a voltage drop, and I'll call it, let's say, let's call this R1. R2, and then R3. So I'm going to have a voltage drop, right? Because my current and my loop, my current's going to, is notice is going clockwise, right? And my loop is going clockwise. So they're in the same direction. So it's going to be a negative IR. Okay. Now I keep my journey through. Nothing from C to D. And now I come from D to E, right? or D to A, come back in and complete my loop. And this ends up being a negative IR1. Okay, actually let's call, let's kind of try to keep in line with some of the numbering that they have in the, in the diagram. Um, so we're gonna call, this will be R1, because it, it, it'll tie with current one. This will be R, three because it'll tie with current three and this will be r2 because it'll tie back to current two okay so if we write that equation real quick so a b c d a right the sum of the voltage is equal to zero and so that's going to be 
0 equals 10 minus I1 R1 minus I3 R3. Okay. All right. Now we're going to do BEFCB, right? So BEFCB, that circuit or that loop. All right. So I'm coming. I start at B. I go through R2. It's a negative I2 R2. Okay. Because we have a voltage drop. I'm going in the positive, coming out of negative. It tells me that that voltage will be negative. I come through, nothing down this leg, right? The, from F to C. And I'm going to go from C to, uh, back to B. Okay. So for, um, in this case, the loop and the current, it seems weird, but yeah, it, the loop and the current are actually going to travel in the same direction. I apologize, they are not going to travel. So this will actually be the traveling in opposite direction. So we actually have a voltage rise at this point. So for from B, from C to B, it's going to be a positive R1, I1. And then note, I'm going into positive out of negative. So for that second loop, the 10 volts will be negative, right? And so again, sum of the volts, sum of the potential difference equals, and I'm just going to kind of collect it all together. So negative I2, R2, right? Uh, minus 14 plus R1, I1, or I1, R1, minus 10, right? And that has to equal zero. Right? So notice I have two equations, three unknowns. But we know from Kirchhoff's, uh, his uh, junction rule that right here, right, I1 has to equal the sum of I2 plus I3. Okay? Or I would say, um, I've got this backwards a little bit. Uh, sorry. Um, So we know that the sum, right? And so you got I1, R2, or I2 coming together. And that has to equal I3, right? And so that's what I'm going to do. Take this right here, plug it in for I3. So now I'm going to do a little bit of algebra. Let's say 0 equals 10 minus I1, R1 minus I, uh, I1 plus I2 times R3. Okay, uh, distribute that R3. Okay, um, and again, I'm just going to kind of do, <laughs> this just ends up being a system of equations. So I can simplify this, becomes um, negative 24 uh, minus I2, R2, plus I1, R1, okay? Notice that like I can, if I do a little bit of elimination here, I can get rid of that I1, R1 by, so it becomes negative 24 plus I1, R1 um, minus I2, R2. I apologize, this should be an R3, not I3. Okay. Um, and if I kind of do some things here, if I add down, I get zero equals negative 14. This gets eliminated. Um, I don't really want to do that. Let me, so let me back all this up. I don't want to do that because I have a, I would have another I1 still sitting in there, but I do want to do this. All right. Um, all right, so what can I do? Um, if I, uh, let's get, let's say 10, sorry. So 10 equals I1 times R1, R2, yeah, R1 plus R3 minus I2, I3. Um, 
or three, right? And so then this equals zero, so that'd be 24 equals, um, so I1, R1, right, uh, minus I2, R2. And here, let's, let's substitute in, right? So we know that R1 plus R3 is going to be uh, R1. It's going to be 8. So it's going to be 8I1 minus um, R3 is is 2, so 2i2 two two equals 10, and then I've got uh, 24 equals um, R, R, R1, which is 6, so 6i1 six minus, and then R2 is 2, so 2i2. Two two. Why I'm missing a number? Or, oh, R2 is 4, not, sorry. So this should be a 4. All right, and so if I do some math here, if I multiply this whole thing by 2, I get 20 equals 16i1 minus 4i2. Um, and this should be, one of these should be a plus. Why am I missing a plus sign, a positive sign? This should be a plus. Yes, I draw, I missed the plus, this, this, yes, yes, this should be a plus sign. Sorry about that. All right. And so, that becomes plus. If I add down, I end up with, 44 equals 22i1, right? So 22, so that tells me i1 is equal to 2 amps, all right, by doing some simple algebra. Now I can plug that in and find what uh, i2 is. Um, I can use any of the equations, but let's say that 24 equals 6 times 2 minus 4i2. All right, so I get 24 equals 12 minus 4i2, okay, and then this becomes 12 equals negative 4i2, so i2 is equal to negative 3 amps, okay, and then I come back up here to say i3 equals 2 amps minus 3 amps, which ends up being negative 1 amp, okay, so there is Kirchhoff's rules, right, the second example is much more heavily involved than the first example, but you treat, again, you treat each part of the circuit separately, and then you kind of mishmash all these equations to get it, right? This is his junction rule, okay? And then here is his loop rule, all right? So we're going to change now. We're going to start turning our circuits into what are called RC circuits, so resistor capacitor circuits.